MotoGP is underway. If you think riding one of these fiery beasts is hard, try designing and building one. Creating and constructing a winning bike is a highly technical and fiercely competitive process. The Austrian motorcycle manufacturer KTM decided to go for it. Since we had finished every class with the World Championship title, it had always been a dream for us to tackle the top class of motorsports, MotoGP. The first thing to work on is the engine, the heart of a racing machine. As soon as the first one is built, it has to perform on the dyno. Dyno. Short for dynamometer, a test station for engines. After its first scream, the engine needs to be housed in the frame or chassis. While other manufacturers use aluminium, KTM decided to work with high-strength steel. Steel is something that we have been working with in many projects and for a long time. We can react quite quickly to needs that we find on the track. The tailor make the stiffness really for the rider by varying things like wall thickness, um, like diameters, position of tubes. And in total, the way then from a design to having a frame in hand is quite short. It would take us around four days when we would have all the raw material there. And this is quite a bit quicker than aluminium. Once the puzzle is complete, it's time to hit the racetrack. Shakedown test, the first test session of a racing bike. In Spielberg, when we put the bike on the track the first time, it was super fantastic. It was really the moment of like, okay, we've arrived. The bike was doing very good at this track, to be honest. It was uh, closer than I had hoped for. We had no problems. And uh, we could show really that, hey, these guys are going to be serious. The verdict everyone is waiting for. What does the rider think of it? Good job, good job. OK, maybe he's inside the corner. He's missing a little bit of angle. Okay. Maybe he's not turning at some angle, you know? It could be easy to make boom. That is just the beginning. Developing a race bike is a time-consuming and complex job. One of the most difficult things in MotoGP is to develop the bike. To understand what you, what you need, try in the right way, uh, take a decision and continue to work. That looks easy, but is one of the most difficult things. A lot of electronic monitoring devices are mounted on a MotoGP bike. To free up some of the rider's bane power for the task of racing, the bike itself helps with engine control, with the data being processed by the ECU. ECU, engine control unit. The rider controls the engine power via the twist grip, as on all motorcycles. But on a modern high-performance machine, the ECU is part of that control, modulating the engine power according to a number of factors. The 1,000cc MotoGP engine is capable of spinning the rear wheel anytime, anywhere. The ECU is on the rider's side, helping him get the maximum out of the engine and tyre. A degree of rear wheel spinning helps him turn the machine, power sliding, essential for the best lap time. Too much wheel spin at the wrong time or place can, at the very least, cause loss of traction and forward drive. More seriously, loss of control in the corner. Even in a straight line, the ECU is helping, limiting the rear wheel spin to keep forward drive at a maximum. Even approaching top speed, where the force required to push the air aside is ever increasing, the rear wheel speed is 12% higher than the front, and the ECU keeps a watch on it. The best reward for years of hard work is a champagne shower on the MotoGP podium. That's when you know it was worth the fight. MotoGP is underway.